What is this? I gotta play this. I remember doing a video about this guy before. What was it about? I forget. But he looks familiar. Okay, let's uh, pump up the volume. What is this about? Christian hate preacher Jonathan Shelley is furious about images of Jesus with long hair. God does not have long hair. I mean, would someone destroy all those wicked, perverted pictures of Jesus? <laughs> because that's not Jesus. Okay, almost every picture of Jesus is this snow white, effeminate looking queer dude with long hair wearing a dress. I mean, Bruce Jenner looks more like that than Jesus. Okay, of course, they want Jesus to look like a literal tr Whereas the Why'd Jesus bleep that of the out? Bible looks like a real man. And you know what? When they looked at Jesus, you know they said he looked like John the Baptist and Elijah. And you know what? They look like Harry. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not Harry, you're not a real man. I have to agree. Men are terrible. They're very hairy. I want to see some kind of a hairy, short-haired dude wearing pants. This guy can't be serious. Kind of Middle Easter looking. That's Jesus. This guy would make a great Muslim, but he's a Christian, right? Yeah, he's a Christian. Not some white skin, fair skin, long haired. Oh, this guy's woke. This Christian hate preacher, Jonathan Shelley, is woke. He doesn't want any white Jesus. A feminine, queer looking sissy in a dress. That's not Jesus. Okay, and it's not the Asian Jesus. Uh oh, it's not don't say Oriental Jesus. Whatever you do. Not the Mexican Jesus. It's not the black Hebrew Israelite Jesus. No, no, no. He was probably Egyptian looking. He probably looked like me because I'm a real man. That's funny right there. I don't care what you guys say. That's funny. Like, do you want people like this to uh, go away? Like, wh where would we get our dopamine rush from? Okay, who was here first? Uh, I got to scroll all the way up. Jusoni. Yes, very well done. You are a gold star winner. 10,000 pine points to you. Togborn. Is that a new name? I, not, I, I don't think I recognize your name. 5,000 pine points to you. But yes, uh, thank you for being here second. And Martin Van de Kuiji. Ku, uh, you, you taught me how to say your name, but I forget already. Uh, 1,000 pine points to you. And highways and byways, bye. See ya. You don't belong here. You're a loser. Not a loser. A loser. Okay, um, today's the is Thursday, the way you do that. Why don't I ever have this up ahead of time? Because I have a real job, that's why. I was doing other things. Uh, the way you get in here is uh, you press a button, which is hard, hard for some people to press buttons. I'm good at pressing buttons. I know just which buttons to push for all types of people. <laughs> Did that sound naughty? Did that sound naughty? Maybe when you guys come in this time, say uh, if you're a theist or an atheist, and uh, th theists get first kick at the can, and uh, and if they um, if the no theists show up, then I'll I guess I'll, if I have to, I'll talk to atheists. How's my volume today? I think it's good. I hate being quiet. Yeah, highways and byways, you're a loser. Uh, there's, I, I did a video on, uh, let's see, I did a couple, I did a whole bunch of shorts. I did the, uh, Muslim singing and then, uh, any Deadpool lovers out there, you'd find that funny, but not too many of you are Deadpool lovers, I guess. And then I did uh, one on, this really gets my gitch in a knot. When I debated Trent Horn and he asked, well, what could cause this? Uh, experience that the Apostle Paul had on the road to Damascus. And I said, well, maybe he um, felt guilt that he was persecuting Christians. And when people have these strong emotional feelings, then weird things happen in their mind. And he said, but there's no evidence for that, right? That's just speculation. I said, sure, it's speculation. And then that, 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 that red-bearded cowboy says, basically, uh, Mary and Joseph lived in, they had a, two homes. 
The Bible doesn't say that. Why, why does he get to speculate and me not? I, I get the impression from Trenor that I'm not allowed to speculate that. Ooh, no, no. You got you to gotta look at the evidence. You don't start introducing speculative theories. But when it comes to harmonization of the Gospels, oh yeah, then Christians can speculate all they want. Um, but then I made a video on why did God create? And I think this is uh, the biggest plot hole in Christianity and Islam is this whole idea of why God would create. And the reason why it's a plot hole is because you have these conflicting ideas of a God in the Christian sense, a God who's all loving, all good. Uh, Muslims agree with that, but from their point of view, it's a God who's all just and doesn't, he hates unbelief, he hates sin, he hates evil. Christians believe that as well, of course. But then why create something that you don't desire, that you know is going to happen, that you don't want? And uh, a guy named Jimmy, uh, the same guy, the, the red-headed cowboy, um, a Christian said, hey, this, this is the closest I've found to answering your question, Doug. I said, okay. So the question is, why did God create? And if this is like a, the best answer out there on the internets, then let's take a look. And by the way, I, I'm, um, I think I reread, I pre-read this, and I, I don't think this is any good. So please, someone come and call in and save me from this. But let's read it together. Uh, why would God create people he knows will go to hell by Jimmy Aiken, December 4, 2020? This is a common question, and many have tried to answer it online. Most of the answers are unsatisfying. They tend to do one of two things. Number one, they say a lot of stuff that doesn't really address the issue and instead talk around. Yes, I agree. Or number two, they say it's a mystery. Yes, I agree. That's a common, common answer. This is probably the best answer you can give. Just say, uh, I don't know. Many of the answers you'll find spend a lot of words on these two things. Frankly, a painfully n large number of words. Oh, actually, I'm starting to like this um, red-headed cowboy more and more. But the first is irrelevant, and the second is not very informative. It's true, it's true that since God's mind is infinite and ours are finite, we often can't give definitive answers about his decisions, decisions so an element of mystery remains. However, we can often give partial answers or at least make informed proposals. In other words, we can do better than saying we just don't know it's a mystery. I think we can do better in this case. Okay, do better then. Keeping the issue focused. I should uh, make this bigger, but uh, this will work. I'm, I'm too fast of a reader. To avoid going off tangents, let's make the issue as focused as possible. Suppose there's a person, we'll call him Bob. We'll call, his last name is Price. <laughs> and the following is true. In his eternal perspective outside of time, God knows that if he creates Bob, then Bob will freely choose to go to hell. Okay. We'll assume that in his eternal perspective outside of time, Oh, the open theists are not going to like that. God could freely choose not to create Bob. I'd say most Christians agree with this, that God has free will. He wasn't forced to create. God is just. This is a stupid assumption. It's, what does just mean? It just reflects the nature of God. So you're saying God is God. God is loving, same thing, and thus does not want anyone to go to hell. Now, this has some meat in it. Okay, so we have this God who doesn't want anyone to go to hell. What's the best way to guarantee, as my friends from Michigan say, what's the best way to guarantee someone doesn't go to hell? Don't create them. Done. Simple. What's the best way to not have poopy diapers in your house? Don't have a baby. And don't let any babies in your house. Given these things, why would God create Bob? Let's look at some possibilities. Possibility number one. There is a competing good. Even if people don't want something, they may tolerate it for the sake of a competing good. Yes, that's true. Like, um, my wife probably doesn't want a snoring husband, but she may tolerate me for the sake of my competing goodness. 
And when I say competing goodness, I mean goodness. I may not want the pain of having to get an injection, but I may tolerate it in order to avoid getting a disease. In the same way, God may not want Bob to go to hell, but he may tolerate it for the sake of some other good or set of goods. What could offset Bob going to hell, I wonder? Well, we go on. Uh, so what might these offsetting goods be? Free will and love. An answer that some propose is free will. In other words, God tolerates the decisions of some to go to hell because he wants to preserve their free will, which he does for the sake of genuine love. This is just babbling talk. We got a guy who God knows will freely choose to reject God, and he creates him anyhow, knowing what he'll freely choose, and hell's a really bad place. But God tolerates the decision for some to go to hell because he wants to preserve their free will. He can preserve the free will of people who choose him freely. Done. Just create people that he knows ahead of time will freely, 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 freely choose him. You got Is it like you got to have some people go in hell in order for the people who choose to go to heaven so they can say, yes, we are the champions and they're burning in hell. Isn't there some early church father who said something like that or had some poem? Love is God's most important priority, Matthew 22, and he wants people to be able to freely choose love. Program robotic love would lack something and not be full of joy. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. This means he must tolerate the possibility that they will misuse their freedom. This is still, still missing the point. He doesn't have to create them in the first place. Oh, and the, look at this. The redhead cowboy agrees with me. All that's true, but it doesn't really address the issue. Well, then why did you even talk about it? This is wasted space. Hmm. If our starting assumption is true that God knows what Bob will freely choose if, if, if he creates him, then God could simply decide not to create him. Yes. In that case, he could stop Bob from going to hell without seeming to violate his free will. Bob would simply have never existed. Yes. The free will defense thus doesn't, doesn't, doesn't seem to work if our starting assumption is true. So what other possibilities are there for a competing good? Oh, the cowboy is basically admitting that if, okay, there's, there's some goodness that comes out of sending the people to hell or creating people who will freely choose to go to hell. And free will and love can't be one of them. For Bob, for Bob, right? Uh, so what other possibilities are there for co competing good that would lead God to tolerate Bob going to hell? Okay, so we've thrown out free will and love. God's glory. Oh, this is, yeah, you, how many times have you heard this? Why did I um, create my child that I know for sure would uh, suffer eternally in hell? Well, it makes me feel good. I love my glory. I need me some more glory, says God. Perhaps the most commonly proposed answer is God's own glory. The idea here is that it brings glory to God to have illustrations of his character that actually exist. What? Illustrations of his character? Is he saying God doesn't actually exist? Oops. To, um... Quote Chris D'Elia, the comedian. Oops. He's implying God doesn't ex actually exist. <laughs> uh, am I? See, Myron. Oh, he's not back from Disney World yet. I'm supposed to be in the forefront. There you go. Uh, Bob's going to. Go, Bob's going to hell provides a concrete example of God's justice in that God did give Bob the offer of salvation and Bob freely rejected it. Okay, but if he didn't exist, he wouldn't reject it. He's thus an object lesson that illustrates certain aspects of God's character and brings glory to God. Whoa! Whoa! Bob is an object lesson. All you non-Christians out there who are bound for hell... You're an object lesson. Don't you feel special? 
Jesus died for me, me, me. Many will find this answer unsatisfying. Duh! <laughs> if a human being were willing to let someone go to hell simply for the sake of his own glory, we would say that human is a raging egomaniac. Yes, we would say that. Okay, I got a call. Oscar. Hey, Oscar. You got to unmute yourself. Hello, hello. Hi. What, uh, you want to talk about... Uh, I know you're an atheist. That's okay. But what do you uh, want? To, do you want to talk about uh, this uh, God, why would he create thing? I, I've been talking to people about this as well, because I think there's another idea that is like every possible world that is on balance better to create than not. Shouldn't he have created them all? Like take the opposite of your view. You should create everything, like every possible world that's like even slightly better than worse. No, that's still a horrible answer. You know why? Why? Because if you believe in the Omni God, he doesn't need anything. Even the word desire is like, doesn't really make sense because that it almost implies he's, he's not self-sufficient. And if he's going to just create a whole bunch of possible worlds, not one of them is going to be better than him alone or it alone. So you're done. Yeah. I think, okay. So, so, so imagine God is there and he thinks of all the possible worlds and then he ranks them in like how, how worth it would be to create them. And like all of them, that's slightly worth creating. He else does it. It doesn't do it for himself. It's like, yeah, it's good. If this exists, uh, I'm just gonna have it exist. But I think it's strange to say that he creates exactly one of them. Like that's just a strange result. And it, yeah. Yeah. But I think I have the opposite intuition. I think he should create every possible world. That's. Uh, but in some of these possible worlds, it, it might be worse than ours, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like some 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 worlds are just like barely barely worth creating. Like if, <laughs> if think of it this way: if I. If I have a really good meal and I am completely content and satisfied, I'm like a, a lion on the safari and I'm just lying underneath a tree in the shade and I'm just like almost sleeping. I'm just so happy. And then someone comes along. But do you want this dessert? I'm going to go, no, get away from me. I'm content. I'm fine. This is the view I have of an omni god. He's content. He's fine. He does not need or even would desire anything else other than himself. And in the Christian perspective, living in um, three persons, he's never lonely, mm -hmm. never bored. So if you could, Pine Creek, if you could just snap your fingers and on some distant planet, which you will never see, they will just sprout out like this wonderful forest and they will just like uh, t pop into existence a bunch of super happy people they will live a really really good life for like 100 years and then they will no longer exist you don't think that's like worth snapping your fingers once for okay so like you create a world full of happy people for 100 years you don't you don't benefit but like they do yeah but why do i care about them i'm god I think the idea is that it would be a nice thing to do, not for yourself, but for them. I know, but it, by creating them for a nice thing to do, like we are humans, like when we help old ladies across the street, it makes us feel good, right? And that's part of the reason why we do good things because we get this this positive feedback. Does the Omni God need a positive feedback loop? No. I remember, I remember talking about this uh, with my mother. She said there couldn't be like, any non-egoistic actions because you always benefit by like feeling good yeah and and i was really annoyed by that i was like i should try to become a person that really hates helping people but still do it because that would be really altruistic <laughs> so it, it would really pain me but i would help them and that would be like well yeah true non and, pe and yeah. people do that as well but even then like i'm a father and i would probably uh I, I can easily say this now on a live stream, but I think I would, in certain situations, I would die for my kids. Um, but I think a lot of that is uh, evolutionary programming. We want 
uh, our children to survive. And even if I don't die, I would do it um, if I can still think about it. I, I yeah, still, before you do. Yeah, I still hope for their for their future because I have these selfish desires. I want my child to do well because that makes me feel good. But yeah, I think your mom. <laughs> I think your mom is right. Yeah, but but I can imagine like if you um, maybe God doesn't feel good about doing it. He just does it because like that's what it is to be good. He has to oh, do that kind yes. of stuff. Oh yes, Kate. Yeah. Now and I think uh, the um, redhead, the, the cowboy, talks about that, or maybe he doesn't. Oh, are you watching the Bart um, Jimmy Aiken stuff? Uh, Jimmy Aiken, I'm reading one of a post he made, but that that is one solution to the problem, and say God, you're hmm. basically saying God's not free, because His nature is good, and yeah. part, and part of His good nature is to create, and He can't do otherwise. Yeah, so He just creates every possible good state of affairs, but it's really hard to get him to stop at exactly one and exactly this one. Like it feels just weird. Like really, this is the best he could do. This feels like a middling good sort of affair. Well, and you're assuming like if this God exists, you're assuming that there is only one possible world right now. Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't have like a way of telling, I guess. Yeah, none of us do, but I could easily say, well, yeah, maybe God's created a, a trillion worlds. We just don't, we only know about yeah. ours. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, that seems more plausible to me. If God exists, I, I expect infinite worlds. Yeah. And um, most of them better than ours. And this was just like barely worth creating. So it's like, okay, let's do that. So why not? Do you agree? It's not like I get tired on the seventh day and have to rest. Do you agree with me that this is probably the biggest plot hole within Christianity and even Islam? Because this is the problem of evil, um, basically. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think just the non-predictiveness of theism is really annoying. I've been thinking about like the opposite kind of problem of evil. You know, let's say you're at um, you're at some cliff edge uh, together with like a toddler that has just learned to walk, and you're like really afraid that they're gonna walk off the edge. And then you hear someone shouting from the forest and they need your help. So you're like, oh, I better run and help. And then you're like, wait, I can't leave the toddler here alone near a cliff. Maybe they may fall down and die. But like, if you're a Christian, shouldn't you be like, of course I can leave my baby here near the cliff with God. Like God is, <laughs> God is a dependable person. He loves my kid. He has the power to help. He can see if something goes wrong. And if the baby falls, it was because God was like, this is even better than the baby not dying. So I think Christians should by, just be okay with like leaving kids in those kind of situations. No, no, no. No, they would say that God gave you a brain, Oscar. Hmm? And God gave you a brain. You got to use your brain. And so you don't. I am. You don't, you don't put your hand and let's sit on the stove. You don't make these stupid mistakes. You don't let your, your child alone. But, it's not, but like think of any other dependable person who can watch your baby and has the co like the ability to interact and that you trust maybe your wife like you would you would be perfectly happy to leave the toddler with your wife and run and help someone but, but god, so god, much worse about god god, god doesn't have <laughs> limbs he can't keep the child away from the cliff from falling over the cliff he has no hands yeah. your wife has um, hands i think many christians would want to say that he can stop a toddler from falling off the Cliff edge, but maybe. And if issues. he does, and and if he does allow the child to fall over the cliff, it's yeah. for morally sufficient reasons, and the child doesn't yeah. die; it just changes locations. Yeah, I know. So, so why why fuss? Like this is the weird thing. Like, but Christians they just refuse to do that kind of stuff. They don't leave the kid near the edge. Like, why? What is like? Are they thinking God's gonna make a mistake here? Just leave the baby. Like God's gonna sort it out. You're needed in the forest, run and help. Oscar, for Christians and Muslims alike, the world to them is naturalistic. And that when it comes yeah. to the big things, God is gone. He's absent. They just take this idea of God like a salad and they s sprinkle God on top for <laughs> seasoning to help, you know, get them th through the salad because, you know, salad doesn't taste that good. Life does not doesn't taste that good, but you put sprinkle yeah. a little bit of seasoning on, you can get it down. A little bit of dressing. God's no, yeah, he's dressing. Yeah, yeah. it's um, like you pray to God when 
all else fails, right? You don't do it when you have other options. You can call Superman, you call Superman. You, you, can't, you can't do that, then you call God. Oh, yeah, that's one of my favorite um, thought experiments. Yeah. Your child is about to fall over the cliff. I'll use what you said here. And you have two choices. And you see it from a distance, but you can't do anything because you're t too far away. And you have two choices. You know everything. Knowing everything you know about, about God, Yahweh, Allah, whoever. And know, knowing everything you know about Superman, who do you call on? And I, da <laughs> I dare any Christian to say publicly to me today, after hearing this thought experiment, that they would call upon God. So they we wouldn't. assume Superman does exist in this scenario. Yeah, yeah. so we assume Superman exists yeah, yeah. and God exists, or Yahweh or yeah. Allah, whatever. And I guarantee you, every Muslim and every Christian listening, if this was a reality, they would call upon oh. Superman before God any time of the day. Although I've heard, <laughs> I heard from Rebecca, so I don't know, know if this is true, but that some um, of the Muslims she knew, like they didn't put the seatbelts on their kids because they were like, when Allah, Allah is not going to make something bad happen, right? Like it's it's safe. Well, this is evolution. And, I mean, this is... <laughs> this is... And then... <laughs> the stupid the die world. and the smart live. <laughs> and then on a horrific note, uh, I heard... Um, what was it called? Uh, ISIS, that they bombed some school uh, where they had a bunch of like Muslim kids in the school as well as I don't know, maybe American soldiers or something. And they bombed the school uh, and they were like, like, it's cool because we can bomb the school. We can get rid of all the like American infidels and like all the Muslim kids, they're just going to heaven. Like there's, <laughs> there's no downside. So, yeah. It's a win-win. It's just yeah. the perfect sorting mechanism. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the scariest part about religion when they believe their death leads to eternal happiness and other people's death uh, is judgment. Like, yeah. anyhow, I want to get like through what? this this thing yeah. here. Um, but yeah, thanks for calling in, Oscar. Have a may, good one. May science bless you richly. <laughs> okay, uh, God's glory, blah blah blah. Um, Bob is going to help provides a concrete example of God's justice in that God did give Bob the offer of salvation and Bob freely rejected it. He's thus an object lesson that illustrates certain aspects. Okay. Many find this unsatisfying. If a human were willing to do this, uh, they'd be a raging egomaniac. Yeah, I really appreciate um, Jimmy saying this. Of course, of course, God is not a human being. We have only finite value, but God has infinite value. So his glorification would be worth more, even infinitely more, than the glorification of the human. My goodness, but what does it matter to glorify God? Or have him glorified? Like, how is this still not a raging egomaniac? It's just saying he's a big raging egomaniac. Circle 1902. Oh, hello. Hi. Sorry, let me pause the stream. Pleased, pleased to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is the oh, my God part? <laughs> um, no, no. <clears throat> I had a question. I, I'm not sure. Are you taking um, these calls only? or? Uh, well, I just talked to Oscar, and he's an evil atheist, so I can talk to oh, you. Oh, You're probably nice. a good atheist, okay. right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. Um, I just had a question. Uh, I am an atheist. And uh, is, let me set it up. Sorry, I just got home from work. Uh, That's all right. What do you do? I, I'm a delivery driver. I deliver to tech companies down in California. Okay. So you're in, yeah. you're in the blue state of California right now. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I guess I'll just go into it. Uh, how do I know I'm not just mimicking what other atheists say now? Oh, this is good. You know, because because I've I've been thinking about it a lot this past few months. I'm like, how do I know? Because I watch a lot of atheist experience. I do. Uh, I have a YouTube channel myself and, and I feel like I'm just saying the same thing. And I'm like, okay, am I saying it now? Because 
I know it or because I really doubt it or is it because well, what sort of things are you saying you know the, the, the problem of evil stuff um sorry uh, I'm a little nervous no, that's all right like are you having doubts that uh maybe there is it, a god um, or something I can't I'm having doubts of my atheism, I guess. Well, that's good. So, yeah, because I remember as a kid, I would, I would, they would tell me all these things, but I would be like, why do we got to, you know, bathe in the blood of Christ and all these things? And um, I had those questions, but now I'm having questions about whatever I'm going through right yeah, now. Yeah, so you're feeling like you don't want to just be like a lot of christians or muslims who are just confirming their own biases you really want to know what's true is that what you're saying i guess so i i guess so yeah yeah i think the best way to uh lower your own biases is to constantly the things that you care about deeply constantly um look at the other side of things mm. So I very personally, I very rarely watch atheist channels. Yeah, uh, I'm constantly looking at um, theistic channels. Um, yeah. I focus on Christianity and Islam the most, mostly Christianity though. And right. um, but yeah, I over all these years, I'm still fully convinced. Like I've changed the last year or two to say that I know there's no God. Isn't that mm. amazing? I used to say, "Well, I just believe that there's no God," but now I say, "I know there is none." No, you say you know. I I still say I just don't. I don't believe there is one myself. I I thought I was gonna come here and be like, oh, can you ask me a question to see where I'm at? I guess or I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, what, what's your life? What, what's your life like oh. right now? Are you um, you married? Oh, <laughs> no. Funny enough, I went homeless because of my atheism. You went and, homeless. You know, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, uh, for about a year, I was homeless, slept in the car. You know, everything's back. I'm obviously in my apartment now. Um, uh, anyway, long story short. Yeah, I, she, she said, oh, she, she was talking to her mother, but she's an atheist, something about her friend. I, I can't remember. I don't really want to, but. I just said, what do you mean? We don't all just not believe in anything, right? Pretty much everything went down from there. So how long were you dating her? We were together five years and then I was actually about to marry her a month before uh, <laughs> that happened. So, oh, wow. So you had a ring engaged yeah. the whole bit. I had everything ready, dude. Everything was ready. And then she found out you're an atheist and she dumped you. No, I was an atheist while going out with her, actually, so that your little uh, theory didn't. You know, oh, OK, uh, OK. So you yeah. were you're already an atheist, but and she did know or didn't know. So I was a Christian while with her. Okay. I I was bored at work one day. I looked up atheism and then just a whole bunch of stuff came up because I was like, mom always said, you know, she uh, atheists are bad. And I, I wanted to see for myself finally. I was about 24 at the time. And um, yeah, ever since then, I just doubted even more, more than and, I already did. And you Christian. shared your doubts with your fiance? I did. I did. I'm like, hey, um, this is what's going on. I know you're Catholic, but this is what I'm going through right now. And uh, she accepted it. It was all fine. I never said anything wrong. You know, I at least you know like oh there is no god you're dumb for believing nothing like that obviously i was respectful never said anything uh but i finally kind of had it that one time she said something and you know what'd she uh, say it was that because it was it was a big change it, i had to like relook at everything i believed in like why do i believe in, in that there is no God, why abortion is right or not right, but why there should be pro-choice, major things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, to a Catholic, that'd be a big one. I yeah, yeah. And thing is, too, we we do have two children together, um, so that 
oh. is going to be pretty rough growing up. But that's why I make I made my YouTube channel so that I can have something to give them. I'm not with them right now, mm. but I do want to have something there if they in some way to communicate something later down the road. You remind me of Apologia. Do you know who that is? Apologia? Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 I think that's a big reason why he does his channel too. Really? Yeah. So wow. his kids someday can understand him. Exactly. And if they do have some doubts or something, they at least know, hey, my dad is go went through the same thing. You know, it's, it's all right. It's okay. So. Wow. How old are yeah. your kids? My daughter just turned four and my son's turning two in August. So, wow, that must be tough. How often do you get to see them? Uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, about twice a week for only two hours, those two days. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm telling you it's, it's been rough, but I'm not letting that stop me. Um, I've been, I've been working. I've been working a lot on everything. Any other, I'm telling you, any anyone else probably would have, you know, game over. But so, with, is it because your wife doesn't want you around the kids, or is it because just it's, she lives far away? It's it's she does live about fifty miles away. Um, I'm here alone, so I don't really have you know any kind of support. So financially speaking, it's pretty rough for me and I can't go all the time. It's, it's, I've been looking for a second job, finally found one, but, um, I, I, I am going to see them this weekend. So. Mm, yeah. Well, it's rough. What's your first name? Luis. Luis. Yeah. Well, all the best to you, Luis. I, I yeah. feel your pain. It's uh, a common story, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully it has a, a better ending or a happy ending for you. Oh, no, that's what I'm striving for. That's what I'm striving for. Yeah, keep searching so. out for truth. Be open to changing your mind, and you'll be just fine. Yeah, of course. Uh, I, before I leave, big fan, huge fan. Watch you every night. So. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> well, maybe uh, let your kids watch, too, when they get older. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay, take care, Luis. All right, you too. Bye. Hey, Joshua. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. All right, how you doing? I'm doing well. What, what, what do you want to talk about? Uh, let's see. I am, I would consider myself an agnostic. Um, I'll give you some credit for helping me along that. <laughs> oh, really? Pathway. What did well, you used to I be? Mean, so, I, yeah, I was a Christian my whole life. Um, I even did. Christian campus ministry for a few years. Um, and so I'm very much uh, steeped in the tradition of evangelical Christianity. Um, I have a kind of like you, I, I listen, I listen to good my videos and I, I remember you talking about how you at a layman's almost did like layman level scholarship. Um, so you have a, a pretty strong grasp of some of the apologetic arguments. And so you know, I had doubts for years and studied and studied and tried to make myself believe it. Um, and then recently just realized I didn't and just kind of accepted it. Um, but there's still days where I, I feel myself questioning whether I do still believe something, though it's not the same as it used to be. So I guess my my question or what I wanted to kind of discuss with you, I, I recently read Dale Allison's book on the resurrection. I've heard you talk about it, speak on it in the past, um, even brought it up to Gary Habermas. Um, and so on days like today where I'm feeling a little more theistic, uh, the thing that gets me... Well, you're feeling theistic today? Yeah, a little, a little bit. <laughs> a little <laughs> Did something bit. bad happen? No, nothing bad happened. Okay, usually people, usually people feel theistic when um, there something bad's happened. But anyhow, go ahead. Well, I think... Yeah, just a lot of my relationships are still with people who believe. So I think that keeps me at least, you know, pretty more open to it than I would be, you know, given different a different context. But um, my question is, if we set aside all the argumentation around the resurrection and the, you know, 
the history of the Bible and and, and the main apologetic arguments because I, I haven't found them to be convincing upon, you know, close examination. The thing that I stumble stumble upon is just the strange things that happen that seem to be miraculous, whether we're talking about Christian Christian, Christian miracles or we're talking about spiritual encounters that people have. I don't know, maybe it's just the way I'm wired, but I, I have a hard time dismissing them as mm. mere figments of people's psychological states or imagination. Now, I'm sure many of them are, but for whatever reason, I cannot say that all of them are. Maybe it's just a, 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 mis- a mysterious thing that we just will never be able to understand. But I'm thinking specifically, you know, he talked about the rainbow bodies, uh, Dale Allison and there's other stories you talk about from his own life or things that, you know, somebody appears and they tell you something that you couldn't have already known or somebody has no even context or understanding of who Jesus is and they have a vision of Jesus. And it's like, there's no prior context for that to have. Yeah, I understand what I understand what you're saying. And there are definitely yeah. weird things happen on planet Earth with with humans. One like one thing my wife always t- not always, but often brings up is um the miracle of when she was pregnant with our second child mm-hmm. and i was visiting my sister and uh we were staying in the basement in canada there's basements and um and i was already in bed and my wife went upstairs to get some water or something and then on the way i heard her in the kitchen and then about to start downstairs and i remember praying lord don't let my wife fall down the stairs and at that moment i heard a a thud and Mm -hmm. and i quickly got up and ran and and i said are you okay And she says yes i i almost fell but i caught myself Mm -hmm. this is a true story so so this is one of those things where you joshua would say maybe there is a god and he prompted me to pray at that moment to save my wife from falling down the stairs and potentially, you know, could have killed our our child. But then there's another way to look at it. And that is, I know my wife really well. And she is a klutz. (laughs) And since I know my wife so well, and, and the way I'm wired is I always look for potential problems before they happen. And and I think that's what just happened. And it was a just a full-blown coincidence where me, knowing my wife, knowing what possible problems could happen, I foresaw it before it did happen. And it was one of those times where it, it seemed to align perfectly. But there's many times where I think as a Christian, I, I prayed for certain things, uh, expected certain things to happen, and it didn't happen. It's like we remember the sure, hits. Yeah, we, sure. we remember the hits and forget the misses. It's, it's like uh, scene 11, 11 on the clock all the time. Right. But what I always go to is like my water so- soaked napkin, praying that someone would rise from the dead who's been dead for a long time. Like, have you ever heard anyone talk about that or see that? Not that I'm, I mean, I've, I've never, I have a uh, Craig Keener's big book on miracles. I haven't read all of them, but there's some interesting things in there. Yeah. <laughs> but nothing like that. Yeah, well, that's interesting. You say that even in Craig Keener's book, there's nothing like that. Like it's there are some there are some really compelling stories in there where I think there's one where somebody was dead for a couple of days and claimed that they came back uh, to life. Yeah, there's a someone bit by a snake or something. Um, yeah, I can't remember all the circumstances. And I just think that a lot of religious people, their standards are way too low when it comes to miracles. And they just do, cannot appreciate that coincidences happen all the time in a in a world where there's seven trillion people. Like you're you're bound to get these strange things. Like you're you're thinking about someone, and then the phone rings and it's them. Sure. You know. But how many times do you think of someone? The phone rings and it's not them, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I so. get that. I think if, if we're talking about just like mundane things like that, I'm 100 percent with you know. I, I know that there's, if you're always thinking that God is active, then you're always going to, you know, see something and claim that he's the one who acted, whether or not 
there's a good reason to, you know. But if we're talking about something like a man was levitating off the ground or there's this uh, apparition of the Virgin Mary that hundreds of people are seeing for weeks on end and there's pictures of it, right? I think that's where I'm like, all right, I, maybe we will just never know what happened, but I'm not comfortable saying that nothing happened. Right. But I'm comfortable saying a lot of the just regular I prayed and something happened, all those things. I'm I'm one hundred percent on board with what you're saying. Like most of the time it's probably coincidence or uh wishful thinking or just you know, we we want something to be true and so we believe it. Right. But I think there's sometimes where I've seen where I, I just wonder, man, like I don't have an explanation for this. I don't think anybody has an explanation for this. And I'm more with Dale Allison saying strange things just happen. I don't even know how we can call it God, but I, I can't, I can't dismiss it as easily. And if that's the case, then maybe there's something to the resurrection. Not saying that it proves Christianity to be true. Cause there's other claims that other miracles happen and maybe they did happen, but maybe the explanation is just something that we, is beyond what we've been able to um, formulate up to this point. You know Does what that I make sense? Yeah. What I find interesting is um, it seems like there's a recent push from Christians, especially that this whole idea of miracles. And I, and I think it's because they realize they don't have the evidence. Like they, they realize that you can poke holes in the historical narrative. They realize that, you know, there are naturalistic explanations for the, um, for what we see in the New Testament. And so now they kind of, but, but, but we got these miracles and we have these NDEs, you know? So yeah. th yeah. therefore, you know, we, we know there's a spiritual realm and God exists and that makes it more likely that God wanted to raise Jesus from the dead somehow. Yeah, the logic does it. There's only so far, I think, that you could even take that argument um, without taking an unnecessary leap. Even with the NDEs, like, I don't think, I think NDEs, at least for me, they undermine Christianity more than anything else. Like, oh, really? All these different religious traditions were having NDEs that seem to confirm their own previous religious convictions. So, well, you just said, I mean, that is, yeah, you, you kind of just said that you're still a Christian just now. No, no, no. No, when I was, when oh, you were. Oh, well, let me ask you. Uh, let's, okay, go, come okay. On. So yeah. I'm going to put the spotlight on you. Okay, Please do. Uh, put your hand, right hand on the no, right hand in the air, left hand on the Bible. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, Joshua? As far as I can, I will commit to telling the truth. <laughs> do you believe Jesus Christ is God in flesh and rose from the dead? No. Okay. I'll go and sin no more. <laughs> That's all I had. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think you're fine to be an agnostic and say, I don't know. Um, but let me, contemplate this, though. Okay. And you've probably seen me do this many times before, but it, do you know when I let go of this pen? Okay, well, I'll do it first here. See, it went down. Okay. I'm about to do it again. Do you know it's going to go down? Uh, I can't say that I don't. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I would say too. I Now, that doesn't mean that we both can't be wrong. Right. We could still be wrong. But I think it's totally fine for both of us to say we know that it's going to fall when we let go. It will fall towards the ground. And um, I think it's okay for you to say that you know Christianity is false. You know that there's no God. So those two, to me, those two claims are... Oh, they're complete. Yeah, they are completely different. But um, it's it's funny because when you know the Darth Dokken types, they when they talk to me and they say, "Well, you know that there's absolutely no gods out there." I'll say, if they can be falsified, um, and if it's a god I haven't even heard of before, I'll investigate it. But after I'm done investigating, I think we can still make a knowledge claim. Yeah, I I, I don't necessarily dispute that. I think my agnosticism at the moment is less i don't want to make the leap because i just we never know i think where i'm at is there's if we looking at the scales of this is evidence against god this is evidence for god for me the evidence against 
God is stronger, but it's not all the way, it hasn't pushed the scale all the way down, right? What would you say is the best evidence against God? Uh, I think the best evidence against God is that when you press every religious tradition to make claims about reality, they seem to fail over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess so, you got to always ask which God, but... um. Yeah. But yeah, the... If you have any type of omni type creator God who's all good, all knowing, all powerful, yeah, problem of evil and divine hiddenness are probably the big two. Yeah, I think the last thing I'll say is this with my uh, feeling like a theist. Uh, I think the only way I could believe in God or Christian, I guess particularly Christianity, would be if everybody goes to heaven. <laughs> Because I'm like, I, I don't understand how with if you look and investigate Christianity, there's so much ambiguity, confusion, the problem of evil. There's so many things that would lead people to believe that it's not true. If it is true, I'm like, God, you did a terrible job of showing us. So you got to at least give, <laughs> let everybody in hell. You can't be sending people to hell when yeah. you've so muddied the waters that it's so unclear and ambiguous that reasonable people who aren't just i hate god and i want to do me i think we'll that's say, a I, I think i think that's a trend nowadays actually i, I yeah I, I wish uh i should probably bring up some poll numbers but i think more and more christians are becoming universalists yeah it's it takes away some of the friction that you feel when you doubt because it's like man all these you, you we're, we're so aware of every everybody else in the world we're so aware of different traditions we're so aware that other people across time have not believed this that it's hard to i think with our current intuitions morally speaking to believe that god just sends people to hell because they don't believe like we believe and i think you only get to that space after doubt questioning becoming more liberal or whatever um like so. if there is a god out there that and if the concepts of heaven and hell are true and if everybody just ends up in heaven i would still want the option to uh to leave heaven I've heard you say that. I don't want to. I, I my intuitions don't allow that to make any sense. But I'll I'll take you at your word. You want to leave? Really? Like like think of think about the best party you've ever been to. Yeah. Either either birthday party, whatever. You would want to stay there forever. I mean, I'm in my idea of what heaven would have been like. It would be like going to a party. And then leaving and going to another party and then going where I, I don't know. I don't think that that analogy works because it's almost assuming that this is the enclosed space as if there's not anything new to experience at, after a certain point. And I don't know. In the Christian imagination, I think that there's and even suffering like I, I do think <clears throat> in order uh, for we humans, on at least on planet Earth, to have any sense of fulfillment, we need a little bit of suffering. That yeah, that makes sense to me. And uh, and I don't. Th it says at least in the Christian God version, uh, there's no suffering in heaven. So it sounds really boring. It's like going to um, a, a poker game and everybody wins. You know, I love to see T yeah, jump lose, fun. like when I'm it's playing poker against him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you question it, it breaks down like most other things that are claimed in the worldview. So. Yeah. Anyhow, I got a, I got a Muslim who wants on and sing All to right. me. I bet. So take care. Take care. Bye. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. <laughs> Is T Jump still here? Was he laughing? Uh, is this the same guy I had on the other day? Mustafa. Hey, do, Hello. Do, 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 do. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. But you need to. Good. You need to turn off the. Um, you got the tab off. Turn off the uh, the YouTube tab that you're watching me on. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I think you're good. Yeah. How are you doing? Are you the guy who sang to me the other day? No, no, that was not me. I mean, I would not sing to you unless you want me to. But... Depends what you'd like me to say. <laughs> Do you know what it is? I'm starting to like your channel, even though I disagree. I don't know what it is. There's like a chill vibe.
I'm like Quite George right. Costanza from Seinfeld. It's like even mm. Christians who hate me, if they, if they watch like more than an hour, then they get I hate you. I can't, I can't hate you. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so I wanted to just say um, two quick things, right? Um, firstly, um, the problem of evil came up when you guys were speaking to that uh, Joshua guy. Um, and just with regards to the problem of evil, I kind of think it's an obsolete question under atheism because the whole thing predisposed like presupposes mind for example if i'm walking on the street and a rock oh yeah yeah, yeah. Falls, it will i i might disagree with your reason but i agree with your, your first yeah, thing yeah. you said there is no problem with evil for atheists yeah so i so what i don't understand is how that can be an argument against god because in the ancient like in antiquity right it was from what we know obviously those people probably discussed it before it was first formulated by epicurus and this is why i think the ancient atheists although he wasn't really an atheist, were much more intelligent because he said, God doesn't, no, sorry, the gods don't care because of ev because evil exists, right? As opposed to um, evil exists and God doesn't exist. And like you said, that doesn't make sense because it presupposes mind. So I think the whole problem is obsolete. No, 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 it's a, it's a, uh, I've, it's an internal critique. It's like, if you, if you say Allah's red, mm -hmm. and then you say, here, let me introduce you to Allah, and Allah's blue. I can say, there's a problem here. Your idea of Allah is false. You said he's red, but he's blue. I see what I mean. As an internal critique. Yeah. But you have to accept the premises, don't you? You have to accept the premises of the argument. Like the argument they're presenting. Right, right. So for the Muslim version of uh, why create or the problem of evil would be, since Muslims are less focused on love and more focused in on the um, justice part, uh, Allah hates disbelief. He wants people yep. to believe in him. Mm -hmm. And he will punish people for their disbelief. Mm -hmm. Are we agreed? That God hates disbelief. Yeah. God doesn't like disbelief, yeah? Yeah, okay. Well, there's so that, also the aspect of free will, right? So, Right? So l l let me take you by the hand and lead you down to the, the road that at the bottom of the road there will be a trap. And I'm trying to put you in it, okay? Do I have your permission to try to trap you? Don't oh, trap me, though. Okay. See, this is how you do it. You do, put all your cards on the table. Um, if Allah, do you believe Allah can see the future? Mm -hmm. Do you believe he's ever surprised? And goes, no. ooh, I never predicted that. No. No. So he knows the future with certainty? Yeah. Not Jesus of the New Testament. No, I'm joking. I shouldn't be taking digs. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> so Allah knows the future with certainty. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Does Allah hate disbelief? Um, does God hate disbelief? You want, you want me to use the word God or Allah? I don't mind. I'm just using God just to be more universal. <laughs> um, okay. Does God hate disbelief? I mean, he doesn't like disbelief. Mm -hmm. Same okay. thing, though. He doesn't like disbelief, yeah. Does, mm -hmm. does God punish disbelief? Yep. Okay. Does God want to punish disbelief? Nope. Oh, this is interesting. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to punish disbelief, but he will punish disbelief. He will punish based on, like you said, on the justice part, right? If you commit a crime, you will be punished for the crime. Okay. Like, I don't want to punish my child if they do something wrong, but I'll do it anyway. Okay. That child has volition to do what they want. Did Allah desire to create? Yep. Okay. So now we have all that, all those premises in, in place. Mm -hmm. So Allah created knowing exactly what would happen and he mm -hmm. created, he desired to create knowing with 100% certainty that what he desires will lead to something he hates. Yes, but also something he likes, which is humans who will eventually, or there will be humans who will worship him, who will acknowledge him. So there is good that comes out of the evil. For example, I let my child, um, I won't let my child jump off the um, <laughs> um, flight of stairs knowing he'll injure himself. But I will stop him knowing there'll be good coming out of it. Or let's say God creates humans of free will, right? There will inevitably be people who disbelieve just by the definition of free will. But there will also be people, people who will believe and do much good. The other option, the other alternative is to create inanimate objects, which has no value. It takes the beauty out of like okay. free will and existence. Does I God, mean, it just has to be a... God's not, God's not needy like us, right? He there's No, we don't believe God creates out of need. Because need by definition only applies to things that don't have anything. If you're all powerful, you have everything. So that's why I think the act of creation of God is the most beautiful thing. Because when I create things, I do it out of need. 
Whereas when God does it, it's not out of me. Right. It's out of grace. Because he doesn't need anything. Oh, as a Muslim, you use the word grace. Interesting. Yeah. We do believe in concept of grace, by the way. Yeah, I, I understand. But usually it doesn't, that word doesn't come up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned you have a child. Oh, no, I don't have a child. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a student. <laughs> oh, you're a student. Okay. But if I did have a child, or well, my parents, for my when I was a child, my parents would stop me from doing silly things. I have a little brother and I'm a, a final year dental student. <laughs> so when he tries to eat sugar, I won't let him do it, even though it tastes nice. I know it's not good for him. Right. But we're both agreed that, that Allah has, there's, he has no needs. He's self-sufficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By definition, that's what so necessary is. So imagine a world where it's just Allah. Yeah. Now imagine a world where it's Allah plus humans. Which is a better world. Okay. See, this is what I was going to get to. So you would say that it's a better world. Mm -hmm. So, But you understand the implication you're making? Yeah. I mean, if there happens to be that we have free will and people are punished, that's like saying... Um, no, 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 no. That's, the implication is that mm -hmm. you can get better than Allah. No, no, we're not getting better than God. We're having a world which is better because if God exists by himself, right, it's just him. There's no one right. for him to share. And I'm not using the term him as in a masculine him, just in terms of language. Don't worry about that. But, yeah. Um, so there's no one for him to share anything with. That doesn't mean that God is being improved in any way, sense or form. Like I said, this is not... I don't know. I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about these worlds. So imagine a world of just Allah. Yeah. Now imagine a world of Allah He's plus a... creation. He isn't a part of creation anyway, so it wouldn't make sense that question to say does it get better because he, I didn't say a part. Create... I didn't say a part of creation. I said Allah plus creation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So world mm -hmm. one, Allah alone. World two, mm -hmm. Allah plus creation. And yeah. I thought I heard you say that world two is better. Am I right or wrong? World two is better in a sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. So now let me rephrase. Now you're going to hear. Your, your own words back at you. The yeah. world with Allah plus creation is better than the world with Allah alone. In a sense, yes. Not in the sense that it improves God in any aspect. It's, it's better because it has more things, like in the sense that there are creatures with free will who can do things, who can and join in communion with God. So it's better in that sense. Okay, it's not better let me rephrase it another way. I feel, like, I feel like what you're trying to do is you're trying to make it seem as though God is improving in a sense. No, 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 no. I'll even grant you that that Allah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But mm -hmm. these worlds that we have made for ourselves, yeah. Allah alone, Allah plus creation, which includes evil. What's the link here? I don't get the link. Disbelief. Like, what, what point are you trying to make? The point I'm trying to make is that you're basically saying that you can, you can have a world that's better than Allah alone. You just admitted that. In a sense, where there's creatures to be with God, but that doesn't, how does that link with um, the problem of evil and everything? It doesn't mean, how does that link with the intelligence? Because Allah d hates disbelief. But then you're forgetting the part where I said that if God never created, there wouldn't be the pros of creation. Who cares? There'd be positive aspects. Does, Allah doesn't need those pros. It, and he doesn't need anything. He doesn't right. need every single hell, yeah. It's right. not about him needing. This is about... Um, the act of creation itself being an act of grace, which is what I said at the start. So I, I don't see the link you're trying to make. The link I'm trying to make is that Allah is just fine in that world all by himself. He doesn't yeah. need anything. He's not self, uh, he's, he is self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. He's fine. He's gone trillions of years, earth years uh, before creation because he's eternal past. Yeah. So he'll be just fine going on. He could go cosmic golfing. He doesn't need to create anything, and he's just fine. But yeah, yeah but, I agree. But the I problem, agree. but the problem is that he would also be just fine if he sent everybody to hell unjustly. He would also be just fine. So it doesn't make sense what you're saying because he would just be just fine in any situation. What I'm saying to you is has nothing to do with whether he'd be fine or not. It's about the um, the issue of the problem of evil. Or I don't think it's an actual problem because when God creates and humans have free will. In itself is a positive thing so you're saying would god be fine god would be fine in any situation it doesn't make a difference about what situation no, the, the, the problem the problem is this that because allah hates disbelief and punishes disbelief mm -hmm. every and since he chose to create 
Every person who does disbelieve and is punished for it is ultimately Allah's fault. Okay, that doesn't mean, no, no, that, no, I don't agree with the last part. That doesn't mean it's wrong, though. Like, a judge can hate the fact, or I can hate the fact that my child gets upset when he does wrong, but I'm still going to punish him because he's done something wrong. It's the same thing. Okay, let's say, let's say uh, you had a son. That mean my action was wrong. I, I hear what you're getting at, but you're missing the, the picture. you got to view this from before creation. So imagine you had a son and you really, 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 really hate, hate your son um, using his crayons. You're saying I should never have had a child. That's what you're essentially telling me. I should have never had a child. No, yeah, yeah, but let me... Even, even on human terms, that doesn't make sense because even on human terms, we know that the child... Mustafa, is Mustafa, Mustafa slow down a bit. Oh, okay. Let's say you really, really hated your son uh using crayons okay yep. you hate it you do not want it everything inside you says no 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 i never want a son to use crayons okay but now let's say you know with a hundred percent certainty and you're never ever wrong that if you have a son you know he's going to pick up a crayon and use it okay but you detest it and everything inside you says i don't care about anything else I hate my son uh, using crayons. I have foreseen he's going to use a crayon, so I'm not going to have a son. Okay, look, think of it like this, right? I get what you're trying to say. I get it. But think of it like this. The crayon, what I'm sensing is you're saying the crayon is a kind of free will thing. So No, the crayon create... is disbelief in, in Islam. Which is a, a product of free will, right? It's a product of free will. Disbelief is a product of free will. So the crayon is the free will. So you're saying never give them the crayon. So if they never had the crayon, they wouldn't be able to do bad things with it but also at the same time they wouldn't be able to draw beautiful pictures and we would never have art so who cares on human, no but don't that if, that doesn't even make sense on human terms because we would um never have anything positive in the world anyway then if that's the who case who cares so is that you wouldn't want that you wouldn't want anything positive and we're talking we're viewing this from Allah's perspective he doesn't need people to experience good things but it's out of grace though that, that's the beautiful thing is he doesn't need it we know he doesn't need it we just said he doesn't need anything but it's the beauty of it, have beauty of free will. Who cares? Like you have free will right now. I mean, you wouldn't. Who know cares about, about the beauty of free will? I care about it. That's because you exist. Idea. But we're viewing this. But we're viewing this from the perspective before we, God creates. We exist, though. But that's the thing. We exist. You can't ah, just say we don't exist. Okay, exist. but right. So we, we can experience free will. It's the it's the thing that we it's it's like the most it's like the epistemological foundation. We it's our experience. Can you repeat back to me what you think I'm trying to say? I think you're trying to say that if God doesn't like this belief and if God created nothing at all, therefore that would be a better world. That's what you're trying to say. But you even admitted that. No, I never admitted that. I never said it'd be a better world. I said the opposite. I said a world of free will would be a better world. Oh, yeah, you're right. Right. A world yeah. with, with disbelief is a better world than a, a world with nobody. A world with free will, not disbelief. A world with free will, which is a product of um, free will, will also have disbelief in it. Like, you can't avoid that. If you're going to have people or like creatures, beings with volition, they're going to have like disbelief by definition. So I think like, I think, don't you think anyone in the chat would disagree, disagree with me saying that a world without free will is a bad world. Like, so you want to be in that conflict? So if humans didn't have free will, then what would you do? Then it'd be a very bad thing, wouldn't it? There'd be, they would, they would, we'd, we'd be like robots. There would be no moral responsibility or society would collapse. It'd mean nothing. Okay. So it just you... would mean nothing. So let's, uh, I'll tackle it from that perspective then. Do you believe that uh, Allah knows the day and hour of your death? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you free to commit? And let's say, let's say Allah knows you're going to die at the age of 83. Okay. Do you think you're free to commit suicide Absolutely. tomorrow? Um, am I free to commit suicide tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I feel like, okay, re repeat that back to me, sorry. God, uh, Allah knows you're going to die at the age of 83. Okay. And he's never wrong. Okay. Are you free to commit suicide tomorrow? Well, I think the question is phrased a bit badly because if I'm going to die at a set date, right? Let's say my death is determined to be at this point by car accident, like at 83, right? Of yeah, course, I'm not going to commit so I can't commit suicide today. But that doesn't mean I don't have free will. It just means that God knows how I'm going to die it, it doesn't mean that I don't have any Could you will. choose to commit suicide tomorrow if Allah knows you're going to die at the age of 83? Okay, but then, then God would know that I would die by committing suicide. I wouldn't be dying at 83. 
that's when I would die. Okay, so try. let's say Allah knows that tomorrow you're going to commit suicide. Are you yeah, free not to commit suicide? suicide? Are you free not and to commit would... suicide? So see that you're changing it again. So God will always know the end outcome of my choice. Because God call, brings into action, brings into being my choice. Okay, what came first? Your choice or Allah? What came first? My choice or God? Yeah. So, uh, of course God, yeah, of course God comes first. Yeah, so if God knows what you're going to choose even before you exist. Yeah, this is what I said to you yesterday when I came on, by the way. It was about the issue. It might not have been yesterday, sorry. It might have been a few days ago. But it was about the issue of free will. And some people in the chat didn't get it. But this issue is like exactly what you're saying now. It exists because um the future exists in a sense like right now we're talking about this and the future exists so you're saying god knows so the future must exist in some sense therefore i'm not free to do anything okay i see you can say that i don't mm -hmm. agree you can say that but the same thing exists for the atheist but like this is what i said last time to you i said the problem is bigger for you guys because you guys are also made of inanimate immaterial objects so metaphysically one of those worldviews has to be true either atheism is true or it's not true or like theism is true there is no other possibility so if the one that has less problems is obviously going are, to be more are like, we are free will now if you want but i know it's like free will though i'm saying free will right i believe free will exists it's my first person experience it's the most true thing to me you've heard of descartes i think therefore i am which is actually a spin-off one of al Ghazali's stuff but what's your view of that. what's your view of time in the future like do you think that that um the future is set or do you think do it I... can change no i think the future's um the events of the future is set, but not my choices. Like, I'm like a hardcore determinist, but I just think the only thing that, like, wait, well, the only thing that... You're a wait, hardcore wait, wait, wait. determinist who believes well, in libertarian yes. free will? No, no. I believe I'm a hardcore determinist. I'm a hardcore determinist, right? And most, like, orthodox Muslims are, but not in the sense of a Calvinist, like, God picks who goes to heaven, not like that. Like, but the only thing that is free is our um, choice. So the world, the inanimate world, is very deterministic, but the only thing that we have... Um, ability over is our own okay volition. hang on this doesn't make sense to me you said the inanimate world is very deterministic but not your free choices right not my free choices right yeah okay, okay so but right now god, being, right... god brings the being my choices now look this like is... two rivers imagine two rivers so that's one of them is my choice and one of them is god bringing things into the hang being. on hang on like musafa running parallel you said that inanimate things are determined yeah but not your free choice right and you're going to drop the cup now <laughs> and say it's not. It's not. This is an, an inanimate thing and it's yeah. sitting on my desk. Yeah. Was that determined or not? No, no. Your choice wasn't determined. I'm, I'm talking about how inanimate objects have no control over what they do. You do. Yeah, you that... move the inanimate object. Right. They still, it still moves by laws. So there's still the um, issue of like everything running with precise laws and nature being uniform, which is actually one of the assumptions of science, right? Okay, so, so you're not talking about inanimate objects per se. You're talking about like the laws of nature. The laws of nature, yeah. So everything apart from us, paradoxically, um, doesn't have free will apart from life or certain types of life, right? So I think that should be the foundation point that everyone's... But you believe in miracles though, right? I don't believe in miracles. But listen to this, like, we believe in... Everyone believes in free will. Like, you, you can't say you don't believe in free will. Otherwise, mean you wouldn't be able to have this conversation. Like, deep Why? down... You, Deep down, you do believe in free will as much as you'd like to say I don't, because this would be deep down. You don't believe God exists. I do. I believe God exists. One hundred percent, I do. I believe I we can have free. I believe we can have this conversation without free will. I really do. How can we have this conversation without free will? Like it's absurd. To How can you believe in God? Be... No, but you're. That would say. <laughs> you see what I'm doing? Me... No, I know. Okay. <laughs> so don't enough. tell Fair me. Enough. Don't tell me what I believe okay. or what I don't believe. You can ask me. Okay. 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 Fair yeah. enough. But. In my view, right, I think that's a little bit absurd because how can you believe that you're not you're being forced right now to speak to me? Like that your free will is an illusion. Uh, see, this is your mistake. You think free will has to do with coercion or forcing. No, 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 not forcing. You just said that's forced. Okay, that's the wrong word to use. Not force. Like, how do you, um, how can you believe, right, that you're not in control of your actions right now? How can I believe that I'm not in control of my actions? First right of all, now? it like destroys all the atheist like moral arguments against religion, which I don't think I've heard you make. But if you do, it destroys all those arguments or even any form of convincing. Like, why are you trying to? Well, I'm not saying you are convincing me, but let's say like people you have well, tried to convince in the past. Let's, you're, you're, Mustafa, you need to slow down. You're going all over the place here. Like you asked me the question, how can I? Uh, it links to free will, though. Is it not? This what? all links to free will. Yeah, like, do you, there's a reason why, like, do you think that, that you do things without any reasons? 
No, of course I have reasons to do things. Okay. So is that a reason? Okay. So when you do something, you do it for a reason. Would you say that that is like a antecedent cause? And is that an antecedent cause? I feel like I, the causal chain starts from me. I don't think matter is fundamentally the principal thing in the universe. Like, I believe it's like um, some sort of like, I'm not a pantheist, by the right. way. Yeah, but I believe it's not, matter's not fundamental. I believe it's mind. So I believe it starts with me. So the issue of causation is a big one too, because I don't even believe in like, um, and I don't think most physicists do nowadays anyway, that it's just like linear causation. Okay, so you're almost like an idealist type guy. Yes, but I also don't not believe that in the material world does not exist. Like I do believe it exists. You do believe it exists. I do believe the material world exists, but I don't think it's the only thing, and I don't think it's fundamental. It just doesn't make sense from like a experiential consciousness point of view. I think it's really problematic. Okay, but there's still things that happen inside your brain that cause you to think things. Yes. Yes, but wait. What do you mean? Sorry, expand on that. So, like, there's neurons firing in your brain. Yeah. And that causes you to think certain things or feel certain things, right? No, I believe there's an interaction with my between my mind and my brain. I don't believe I am my brain. And I don't think, um, like, the biggest testament to that is the fact that people who are predestined to have mental illnesses or, like, certain diseases... No, no, like, can... when you put your finger in a fire, yeah, there's a, uh, a reaction that goes up your nerves... Yeah, yeah, via the neuroreceptors and down the spinal cord, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then it hits your brain, and then you go, ow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you free to say, ow? Was I free to say, was I free to say, ow? <laughs> was I free to say, ow? Yeah. Um, you know I what I mean? It doesn't have to be exactly ow, but to have that yeah, yeah. reaction of pain. Not, I, could have, I mean, I could have not said ow, but I still experienced it. Like, I could have said whatever I want. I could have swore. I could have, I could have just kept quiet, but it was a... The experience that caused well, we'll me to put say your that. finger in a fire and we'll see if, if you have the free will to keep oh. quiet. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, I got other people who want on, and we've been talking yeah, a long yeah. time. Okay. Nice okay. speaking to you. Take care. Okay, okay. Bye. Oh, uh, Miss Piggy wanted on uh, Otangela's wife. <laughs> uh. I've not heard the end of that because I just came in, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, put your eye right in that box. I want to see what it looks like. <laughs> no, that's your, uh, yeah. Well, that's oh, yeah, enough. the other one. Sorry, I couldn't see. Yeah. Oh, you would have had a field day with that guy. Yeah, that that's why I've called in because I, I was triggered by the um, mess of whatever the hell he was saying. Um I don't know. I think that your position is probably closer to compatibilism. Um, I'm going to do what he did and tell you what you believe, Doug. But um, <laughs> I think you wanted to say both that your both that um, causally everything is determined by whatever state kind of comes before whatever, whatever physical state comes before it, but that you're free um, uh, that you're responsible for your actions insofar as it's you, the person that's doing them and not, you know, it's not somebody else or anything like that. And that you're free insofar as, you know, you're doing what you want to do. And if you, if your desires were otherwise, then you would do otherwise, you know, like if, if you had, had wanted to do something else, then you would have done something else. Now you wanting to do something else would mean different physical states um, in your brain or whatever, which would cause you to do different things, that, you know, from a physics point of view, but you're still free. I'm okay with saying that every single thing that I'm going to do from this point to the day I die has been predetermined. The thing is, nobody knows what they are, so it, it doesn't matter. I mean, like, we just live our life like things could be different, even if they're not. Yeah, I, I, I agree that whichever sort of philosophical position that you take on this, you're going to still behave in the yeah. exact same way. And yeah. Uh, but but it, just in terms of what that guy was saying, I, I even think, I think as a good Muslim, um, he should also become a compatibilist, right? Where he can then say, well, everything is predetermined by God, but you're free just insofar as, you know, you do what you desire to do, right? Um, like it's you who does it um, and it's 
you who desires to do it. So you're not free in this like libertarian sense where you're sort of the first cause of your yeah, own action well, or something. This is where my lack of knowledge of the of the Quran comes into play because I do think there's surahs that talk about it is Allah who causes someone to believe in him or not, right? Have you ever Ooh, heard that? Yeah. Like I think I, I mean I Islam think... is very Calvinistic, I think. I think it is. I think it's very Calvinistic in the sense that, God, like, God is, like, ultimate will, you know, and everything that happens is, like, willed by Allah. But I don't know, you know, I don't know what the kind of scripture is on people coming to believe in things like that. Because I've, I've heard some Muslims talk of personal experiences and, they, you know, like, God acting almost in their life to give them an experience that makes them a Muslim. I've heard of other people talking more in terms of people having to you know, do something themselves to take the shahada, and I'm not quite sure, so I need to look into it as well. Is there any ex-Muslims here, or even Muslims here, who uh, would help us with that? I, I think that's right. I think that the reason why I don't believe in Allah is because Allah hasn't given me, the, um, they wouldn't use the word gift. Yeah, he's not, he's not, maybe he, he didn't, it's not written that you would um, yeah. become a Muslim. Yeah. Is, what they, but yeah, it's not like there's not like a special Holy Spirit. But then again, I've seen some um, reformed epistemologists, Muslims, in like a reformed epistemology Facebook group. So presumably, there's something similar, a census, Islami Tartus or something. Yeah. Hey, uh, Miss Piggy, if you want to come in, uh, you can try again. Yeah, I, I can head on out because I only wanted to come in and express that I was upset by that guy's philosophy mumbo jump. <laughs> it's so hard talking to Mustafa. Mustafa, I know you're still listening. It's hard to talk to you because you do uh, hop from thing to thing, I think. I mean, it's really hard to... Yeah. Oh, and the, another thing that really frustrates me as well is when people say um, the problem of evil is a problem for atheism, right? Like... No, it, that just shows that you don't understand the argument at all, because the point is that evils aren't expected under the hypothesis of theism, but they're perfectly yeah. expected under like an indifferent universe, which is what atheism is. Well, if you're defining so, so. evil to do anything with the nature of a deity, then of course a, the word doesn't even apply to atheism. So, yeah, it's not a problem for atheists. Just shit happens. Or it's a problem in a different sense. Like may maybe they just mean, well, it's a problem in the sense of like, you think we've got to do stuff about people suffering. It's like, yeah, well, that's a problem, but that's just not what I mean when I talk about the problem of evil and talking about whether it's expected under a certain hypothesis or not. So that's uh, that's frustrating. But yeah, I can um, leave you to whatever, if, you if you're going to go back to reading the thing you were reading before or... Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll figure something out. But yeah, thanks for hopping on. And I hope you, uh, if you have a beer in your fridge, go ahead and drink it and that will help. Calm you down with Mustafa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Uh, DJ Ruthful, indeed, O Muhammad, you do not guide whom you like, but Allah guides whom he wills, and he is the most knowing of the guided. Yeah, that verse kind of sounds like, uh, Mustafa, you think you're free, but you're not. The reason why you believe in Allah is because Allah guided you to believe in him. Am I wrong? <laughs> Mustafa comes back on. Hey, you should show your face. Mustafa. Yeah, Jacob, I just cussed. Hey, and he is showing his face. There you go. You're muted, though. I can't hear you. There you now? go. Now, now you're good. Yeah. Um, did you hear the sir I just read? No, I did not. Do you mind reading that again? Yeah. Uh, I'm not echoing, am I? What's that? I'm not echoing, am I? No, no, you're good. So someone, a DJ Ruthful posted, I'm not sure where this is. Indeed, O Muhammad, you do not guide whom you like, but Allah guides whom he wills. And he is yes. the most knowing of the rightly guided. Yeah, I think... Um, in relation to this, Nathan misunderstood me. He's actually agreeing with me. I agree with him. He doesn't even realize, like, when he described the fact that God is the ultimate causer of things, but we have, like, a compatibilist type free will. Like, I agree with him. So this idea, this verse, we actually believe about this verse is that it's not in the Calvinist sense. 
and I'm not no expert on Calvinist theology, so I don't want to misrepresent it, but they believe that God has picked people to go to heaven, right? Something along those lines. Like, we don't believe that. We believe um, there's an interaction going on. So when it when you see verses in the Quran that says things like, um, um, God guides who he wills, or God has increased them in their disbelief, that's as a result of their own doing. So God does something to them as a result of their own doing. It's not in the sense where God has, pre God has like... Um, um, force them or, co or cause them to do that thing so do you know what i mean no yeah yeah you're yeah. saying that uh allah guides but doesn't determine yeah yeah it's like that i think me and nathan were actually agreeing so i don't know what so do you think so in under islam can a person um do what allah likes without mm -hmm. any guiding from allah no so the guidance is as a result of the individual themselves so it's based on themselves right but god um there's interaction so the like, person comes first then comes allah no 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 no. so the person right the person um like i decide to do something good right that is worthy of guidance so i do right. that thing right you yes, you initiate it yeah allah. so i initiate that thing right so but god has caused it to happen right but he hasn't caused my action in the sense he's caused my action in the literal sense but i chose to do it so in a compatibilist type free will, that God is the ultimate cause of everything. But I chose to do that. <laughs> makes sense, no? <laughs> do you think it makes sense what you just said? I think it makes sense. Think it makes sense. So do you want me to repeat it? <laughs> well, I'll try to repeat it. You tell me if, I, if I'm understanding you correctly. You said that God, uh, Allah causes everything. Mm -hmm. But you were still free to choose it. Yes. Yeah, you sound just like a Christian that I know. <laughs> yeah you sound exactly like a calvinist no it's different to calvinist theology because in calvinist theology right god picks um who in a sense goes to heaven right so well, you're just picking and choosing now i mean you're using the word pick but really mm -hmm. it can be viewed as choose allah has caused everything you said even disbelief mm -hmm. so here's what that thing that i said before is relevant here so this issue of free will, right? This is why I addressed it in a different like a different manner, but you never understood it. I was saying the first foundation of all epistemology is your experience. So I experience free will, right? I can't deny my own experience. I, I know I have free will. So I said there's this issue for both worldviews, both theism and atheism. But under atheism, you also have the issue that there is no agency behind the universe. So there's another layer of there's another there's another layer for the problem. So it kind of like if those two worldviews are the only ones that can be true, either theism or atheism, just using the law of like the excluded middle. So it's either theism or it's atheism. And you agree those one of those two are true, right? There either is a God or there isn't. Like there See, this is what I, I, Mustafa, I'm going to be honest with you. This is what I don't like about you. Yeah. It's like we were talking about free will, all the causing, and now you're getting yeah. into either atheism is true or theism is true. Do you agree? No, no, no. It's relevant to free will because I'm telling you is this issue of free will. I'm saying I experience free will and I know I have it. No, you don't and, know. No, I know I have it because I experience it. Like, just like I know I exist. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I know I exist, right? Hang on, Mustafa. You're saying you know because you've experienced it. Yeah, just like I know I exist. Like, do you get, do you get what I'm trying to say? You think, you think this idea of free will is as properly basic as your own existence. Yeah. Okay, well let's let's back up. Do you think there's some things that you can experience and and have a false attribution or a false conclusion about it? In sense of empirical reality, yeah. But not with free will. Not with experiential things like I can experience um like the analogy of Plato's cave which I'm sure you've heard. I can experience something and it might not be the case in empirical reality, but that's different to my own um experiential thing that's not empirical so something internal to myself like i can feel i can taste the strawberry that's that's true that is not that's not going to be false like i tasted that strawberry i felt that pain okay I but let's say pain. let's say i uh, i am a billionaire and i create a robot okay mm -hmm. and this robot passes the turing test and this I don't think it can. that's the thing you're assuming it can i don't think a robot can pass the turing test let's say i create a robot Okay, yeah. and it and it looks just like me, sounds okay. like me, acts like me, and it comes yeah. up to you and says, 
I have free will. And you say, why do you say that? Because I'm experiencing it. Yeah. Okay. But this okay. is a robot. Okay. That robot's wrong, right? Mm -hmm. The robot is wrong because the robot doesn't have volition. Like we can. Okay, but the robot says, "Shut up, Mustafa." I know yeah. I have free you will. Program the robot to do that. It's not the same thing. A robot is not the same thing. It's been programmed. It's a really it's smart people. robot, and it says, "And you," don't, <laughs> it and it looks it's like me, program. and it talks like me, and it says, "Mustafa." Okay, it's a handsome robot. I get it, but it says, it "Shut up, Mustafa." I know I have free will because I'm experiencing it. Okay, but the robot's been programmed. It's different. Like it's not the same thing. Like you know, it's not the same thing because you experience certain things so and the robot has been programmed to do that no one has programmed you to do that i do think nobody is programmed you i think free will is properly basic so i think if that's the starting point and i know it exists therefore my other um comments about the world use become relevant on the issue didn't you just so, say allah caused everything yeah see but see now you're shifting you're shifting because I told you. You, you said know. you said it's different because you programmed it. All has programmed you, Mustafa. He hasn't programmed me to do things. I have free will. He's caused everything you said. But he's not programmed. He even me. caused you to say just a few seconds ago that you have you know you have free will because you experience it. He caused that. Mm -hmm. You're 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 a robot. I'm not, I'm not a robot. I you're a moist robot. <laughs> I've experienced. I'm not a robot. Like I can. I'm speaking to you right now. I'm choosing to speak to you. I can choose to stay or leave. It's 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 very obvious. It's My robot can do you. that too. <laughs> but it's been programmed to do that. You you've you been programmed as well by by Allah. You just admitted it. <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't been programmed. Well, I'm using the word caused. Yeah, which is different to programmed. Really? How is it different? In the sense that I actively <laughs> take. Uh, no, it, it is different in the sense if I create a robot. I type in the code and I make it do everything I want. want is the it DNA to. a code? I think it is. I think DNA is a code. <laughs> so you have DNA the code. It's DNA been created by DNA. Allah. DNA doesn't. DNA doesn't determine my choices. Like if my DNA, if my, if let's say I, you have, were programmed um, to say that. Let's say, gene, let's say I have a gene that um, causes me to produce excessive testosterone, and that can um, contribute towards violent um, outbursts. I can choose not to be violent. All it has caused you to say everything you just said. You're programmed. Uh, I disagree with you on that. Does it make you feel a little bad if you were a moist robot? If I was an animate object, it wouldn't make me feel bad at all. I mean, there would be no responsibility. Well, you're so. not inanimate. You're moist. What does moist mean? <laughs> I mean, you've got flesh and blood. and Yeah. See, this mm. is this is the problem. Like, I, I think if, if you start saying things like all that causes everything and that you're you're free. Well, mm -hmm. all it caused you to say you're free. I mean, and maybe you're not. Mm -hmm. But there's that. See, we're going to go back in circles. Like I experience free will, so I know it's true. And I think that is a very valid argument because I experience my own existence and I know. It's Can true. someone say they experience God and therefore that God's true? Um, no, That's... because it's not, it's not like an internal thing. God is an external sure thing. It is. They okay. have experienced God internally. Therefore, no, that no, God is that true. That, you can't, you can't do that. Not with a, not with a God, no. But you can do it with, with free will. With things like free will and existence, you can definitely do that. And like experience or pain, all that kind of stuff. Like my pain is what, it, what is di the difference between experiencing God internally mm -hmm. and experiencing free will? So things like free will and pain are internal to the um, to the being, whereas God is external. So saying you experience God is not the same. It's it's like it's an it's a reality outside of yourself. So it doesn't make sense. Well, yeah, sure. There's a reality that's coming that's pain outside isn't yourself, a outside but yourself, it's right? like pain that... isn't a reality outside yourself. Correct. Like your pain. But I'm not saying I'm not saying it's outside yourself. Yeah. I'm saying no, no, God no, no, no. has gone no, no, no. inside you. Okay, but you're assuming that like God is inside you. Like I'm saying, God by definition is a reality outside of you. Well, the, so the, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because like, I think people who say that are stupid, who <laughs> say I, I can experience God, it doesn't make sense. Like, like I won't. It doesn't make sense to you because you're a Muslim, but you know exactly where I'm going with this. Christians say this to me all the time. The inner mm -hmm. testimony of the Holy Spirit. They believe through their own personal experience that's internal that's to them that, that they're that what. 
They're stupid that's for saying. Bo- no, so that's something we can both agree on. That is stupid. It doesn't make sense to say that the Holy Spirit convinces me to do. But so here's so. my point. Here's my point with all this. If if you and I agreed that they're probably wrong, that this what they view as an internal experience, the inner testimony of the Holy Spirit, they can say that and say, "I know it's true because I've experienced it," and yet it still be false. Why can't you admit that with your free will? Because. Like I said before, God is in a reality that's outside the being. So free will is not like you would never say that with pain, would you? I would never be able to like tell you your pain is false if you experience it. Well, you can I say the attribution is false. Like my sister who died of MS, she was yeah. experiencing pain in her legs, but mm-hmm. there was no external stimulus on her legs. It was all like internal. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So yeah. I don't deny her pain. I would never deny her pain. It obviously exists. Yeah. Just the stimulus is false. Yeah, the attribution is false. Yeah. Yeah. I don't deny her pain. So maybe, maybe let's take this to free will. You have this feeling inside you internally that mm-hmm. you are free to make choices. Yeah. Which is true. So that would, by definition. But um, maybe you're not free to make choices, but okay. you're still experiencing it. Just like my sister had a misattribution of pain. Maybe you have yeah. the misattribution of this whole free will thing. But it's, but maybe see, it's not you who's causing these choices. Maybe it's a. Uh, anti You still have it. See, see, you make it. See, that makes sense. Yeah, now. you still have it, but you're attributing it to yourself that you are, that these choices are coming from you, right? Okay. And I'm saying that maybe, maybe that's true, but maybe okay. it's not. So you have free will. No, no. I'm what saying, I'm saying that maybe it's not coming from you. These free will choices. Maybe it is based on everything external to you. Okay. I'm not saying that's necessarily the case, yeah. but but if you value truth, you would say, yeah, that's a possibility, Doug. Are you okay. willing to say that today? Am I willing to say that today? Yeah. If it made if it made a little bit of sense, I would. <laughs> <laughs> you know it makes sense. You just it, you don't want to say it because then you there goes free will, and there goes and then the problem of evil comes glaring at you in the face, right? <laughs> no, I, I honestly honestly I believe that free will is one of those things like pain. Like, I still don't think free will gets you out of the problem of evil with Allah though, because why? Because um, every person who's in hell today, yeah. There is no one in hell, by the way. Yeah, we don't believe that. Okay, Not let yet. me put it the other way. Uh, we will be in hell. Yeah, every person who's going to hell, mm-hmm. they would not go to hell if Allah never created. Correct? Yeah, but we went through this last. We went through this before. I said. I know. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, so we, let's, went, we won't go through it again. But that's see, a, I don't. That's think, a problem in my view for you. I don't think that's a problem. I think that's a, see. It's a good thing. Like you're saying, the alternative yeah. is. A world of inanimate objects where there's no. no. You said that you're okay with that. You said you're okay with that. The alternative, yeah, the alternative is no, uh, no creation at all. And you're okay with that? Why not? I, <laughs> you think it's, I'm going to sit there as a non-existent this, being? This saying, I wish I existed. Happened. This amazing conversation that we're having could never happen. Oh come it on! Could never it could never happen. Would you? Would you wouldn't want that? You wouldn't want your children that you have. They would never exist. Your wife. I'm assuming you have a wife. They wouldn't exist, right? Nothing would exist. Is a thousand that years ago, yeah. a thousand years ago, you and I would not be missing this conversation because we would, didn't okay. exist, right? Okay. That's all I'm saying. That do, the fact that we do is the good thing. Is a good thing. How would you not see that as a good thing? Like you clearly like living. Otherwise, you wouldn't live. You wouldn't want to live. Like what's the? And like, this is going to sound so horrible. Mustafa. This is going to sound so horrible. But then. Why don't you just take your own Mustafa, life? Mustafa, you and I, I don't know where you live, but you and I are probably the most, some of the most privileged people on the planet, right? You got yeah. nice brown glasses. You got a nice haircut. You got you trimmed your beard. You're not starving. I'm not starving. We're yeah. in fairly good health. We are, if you look, out, look at history of all humanity, you realize yeah. how rare we are? Very. And if you add animals into the mix, yeah. like 90% of them has gone extinct. Yeah. Pain There's and a, suffering. Okay. I mean, what you read on that. There's and you're saying you conversations that. like this make all that worth it? Existence itself is worth living. There's a really good book you should read. And I'm not sure if you read it. It's called Man's Search for Meaning. So it's, it was written down by, or it was wrote by a Holocaust survivor. And, the, and he was also a psychiatrist who was in the Holocaust um, in one of the concentration camps. I don't think it was Auschwitz. But 
his premise, the premise of the book is if there's a how, there's always a why. So no matter what situation you're in, there's always something to worth. There's something also always, always worth living for. Was written for. by who? Um, oh, I don't know the name, but it's called Man's Search for Meaning. It's really popular. A Holocaust popular. survivor. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you believe um, some Holocaust survivors are in, will be in hell? Do I believe Holocaust survivors are in hell? No. Do you believe that some Holocaust yeah. survivors will be in hell? I have no idea. I oh, come it. on, Mustafa. No, I have no, no Honestly, I, I can't tell. Who's Do you believe this at is, least one Holocaust tactic. survivor no, will be in tactic. hell? This is a bad tactic you're using now. See, no, this is glorious what I'm doing right now. I honestly don't know. I don't know if any Holocaust survivors Don't in hell. give me this I don't and know business. Were, let's say if they were, right? Let's say if there was a Holocaust survivor <laughs> in hell, right? Let's say there was a Holocaust survivor in hell. Um, I don't see the point. Like, what does that mean? Okay. You were saying you were quoting a uh, Holocaust survival survivor yeah. saying, you know, life is worth it's better to exist, not exist. Based on your previous point on whether existence should be a thing. And therefore I said it should be because even if we're not privileged or people who are not privileged, there's still a reason worth living. And I think everyone in the chat would agree. Do you think, it, you think worth living. do you think if a Holocaust survivor who's gone through torment yeah. and suffering on planet Earth and when then, they would be and then the at the end of time, at the end of the age, they end up going to hell. Do you think it's better they exist or not exist? Um, Please don't say I don't know. If, if Run that by me again. Run that by me again. If the Holocaust survivor... Someone who goes through extreme suffering on planet Earth, and then they yeah. end after they die, and at the end of the age when... And then they end up in hell as well. Okay. Question. Do you believe it's better they exist or not have existed? Okay, so I don't think this makes sense because that's like saying there's an individual, right? So let's say uh, there's an individual who's... Um, You're dodging. Done some... I'm not dodging. I'm, I'm going to answer it using an analogy. I just, need, I just need yes one or, no. or two yes words. Or no. Exist or not, not exist? They're not good answers. Yes or no. I still think existence is a better thing because they had an opportunity. Is that your answer? They had an opportunity to believe but here's the thing this answer is so much more nuanced than simple yes they're going to hell or no they're not going to hell like this is so much more nuanced so i feel like you're it's not you study you topic. study philosophy in school right a little bit okay i'm not a philosopher though okay um, yeah i'm not a philosopher in any way shape or form i'm more of a um scientist but... <laughs> oh yeah what's what science um biology bachelor's and then last year dental surgery okay good for you okay so I asked you, someone terrible suffering here on earth, they end up in hell. And I asked, uh, do you think in your personal opinion, it's better that they have been created or exist or not exist? And your Patience. answer was exist. Yeah, exist. They have the opportunity to do something good. So um, I think this, because um, obviously you're going to have a problem with like someone who has had immense suffering, but was given the opportunity to believe, right? But they still go to hell despite their immense suffering in the world. But under our worldview, um, a crime against God is the biggest crime because crime against an infinite being where crimes against um, finite beings isn't really... Um... You you do agree, though, like the um, crimes, all crimes are not the same, right? So there's differentiation mm -hmm. in punishment for different things, right? I mean, yeah. that's a basic principle. So glad you agree on that. So if a crime is committed against an infinite being, it's obviously... Um, it warrants infinite punishment. But by the way, just saying... Oh, really? We don't... Yeah, of course, I believe that. I Like, that's... But the person who's who did the thing wrong is not infinite. That's where you should focus on. No, it doesn't matter because the crime committed you you, you focus it based on the um, crime thing that the crime is committed against. So if I murder someone, right, mm -hmm. it doesn't warrant infinite punishment because it was it was committed against a being who is an infinite. So if you commit a crime against an infinite being, it warrants infinite punishment. Okay, so if I kill someone, right, it means nothing to God. God could just is, it, is it would it life. have been better if they would not have killed someone? Of course, we okay. don't. We don't. If a Muslim kills someone unjustly, right. we believe they're going to hell. Like whether it's a, whether it's a Muslim or a non-Muslim, that's the thing in our religion. If you kill someone, regardless of who they are, unjustly, you will. So go if to hell. Allah knows that someone's going to freely choose to kill another person, wouldn't it be you better that hell. wouldn't it, wouldn't it be better that Allah not create that person? The most no, because then they have free will, right? And also, no, they have free will. Like God can create them, and that can be um, a way of a, another person achieving paradise as a martyr, or it can be an opportunity for other people whoa, to create whoa, good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Which is which way? Which is the underlying point that I've been trying to make? Like existence itself and free will creates a plethora of opportunities for good, as opposed to the minute evil. So someone died, but there's so much good that came out of it because that person was rewarded 
other people can do good from that. People can learn from it. So much good comes out of small, minute acts of evil. And this is what you're not understanding. So a world which is, which has free will is way better. Yeah, but the person who people. goes to hell forever and ever and ever, it sucks yeah. for them, right? They won't go to hell forever and ever for killing somebody. We don't believe that. Not for killing somebody. Oh, so you don't believe in eternity? Eternity, punishment for eternity is only against someone who commits shirk. And shirk is, it's taken from the Arabic word for like, um, displeased. No, not sorry, not shirk, sorry. What's the word? So we call them like kafir, right? So it's it's taken from the word um, when someone sows or plows a, a, like, a, a, like a farmland, right? It means to know the truth, but to cover it. So if someone knows the truth and they still denies it, they still okay. deny it, then mm -hmm. that warrants punishment infinitely because you've denied the eternal truth against an infinite being. You've committed a crime against God. That's the only Does thing. Does Allah so, cause that denial? No. No, he hasn't. You, you said He's earlier, really... Allah causes everything. No, no. Okay, cause in that sense, but you've freely chosen to do it in a compatibilist sense. So Allah caused you to deny... Allah but causes before, people to deny before. him. Well, I shift between topics, but you shift between topics more than me. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm listening to what you're saying. You're, I'm listening to what you're saying, and you're bringing up this stuff, and I'm going, well, wait a minute, you said this earlier. You shift in between a lot of things. I don't mind, but I'm just saying you do it just as much as me. <laughs> and you throw me in the odd light. Okay, tell me what you want to... What do you want... What do you well, want to talk about right now? I me, mean, my honestly, I love speaking about teleology. That's my favorite thing to speak about. As a, see, I feel I feel a bit smug using the term scientist, but I'm gonna do it anyway. As a scientist, I like using, um, I like speaking about teleology because, in my opinion, I think design is the best argument for a necessary being. Oh God, I think that is like without a doubt the best argument, and I feel like um, Darwinian evolution has made people blind to that fact. Like I like philosophical arguments, but I feel like. Um, so you believe design, you believe the design argument is the best one? One hundred percent, without a doubt, is the okay. best argument. Can you name uh, something that's not designed on planet Earth? That's not designed on planet Earth. Yeah. Sorry, what do you mean not designed on planet Earth? Well, it, I'll tell you something. Right, I'll tell you. I believe a DNA molecule is so clearly the obvious of some right. sort. Of I'm asking you to name something that's not designed. Name something that's not designed. Yeah. On planet Earth. Yeah. Um, so, so I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to say that if I say something like a grain of sand isn't designed and you're saying, doesn't God also bring that into existence? So why is that not designed and why is the DNA molecule designed? Okay. okay. There's a difference between active design and a difference between something um, being caused. And I'll give you an example, right? So we can obviously make design inferences in the past. Like I can look at the pyramids in Egypt and I can, you're not going to look at the pyramids in Egypt, even if you didn't know what they were and say, do you know what? Um, random chemical uh, weathering. You're not going to say that. You're just not going to do that because you know you know it has complex parts. You know it's outside the realms of um. Okay, so your answer is there's different levels of design, but everything's designed. Uh, well, not no everything is designed in that sense, but things. See, this is this it's a very nuanced point. So you can obviously there's do the that same. word again, nuance. Nuance. <laughs> it's a very important. It's a very important word because life is full of nuances, <laughs> and it helps facilitate better understanding. So like. You obviously know that the headphones that you're wearing are designed, right? Mm -hmm. You know they're designed. If you found them somewhere, you'd know they were designed. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because they're full of complex parts. But why would I know? Why would I know that they're designed? They're outside the realms of possibility, and things inside there that are obviously made by human beings or like by intelligent agency. For example, some of the molecules we have in our body, like some of the ATP synthase proteins, right? Listen, no, just listen. <laughs> no, don't tell me to listen. This is my show. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm zoning okay. out on you because you're just going blah 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 blah. Right? You're Get talking it. a mile a minute. If we were actually to count the words you're saying per minute, they're off the charts. It's good to speak fast. Get more points across. No, I don't <laughs> mind fast talkers, but, but the thing is, this is insane. It's not. I'll tell you why. So, you do you disagree with me then that you can obviously tell the difference between design things and not? You d I know you don't disagree. I no. know you can tell the difference between listen to phone. me. I asked the question: How do I know? How how do you think I recognize design? Yeah, and it's yeah, because of my past experience, right? I've seen people make chairs and tables and other things in yeah. life, so okay. it's not a far fetched thing for me to say. Okay, okay fine, uh, right? Fine, okay. I'll grant you that. Let's say design is based off past experience, and past experience is even if you see something right that has um no one has ever designed before, right? You can still say it's been designed based on the
the complexity of the thing and um it's something being outside the realms of prob uh, probability right so um and a lot of the people in the chat are thinking evolution right there's no doubt you're going to see people in the chat thinking evolution but i don't think random gradual steps can um, accumulate anything of worth because randomness doesn't do anything for an organism or it doesn't it doesn't build it it destroys like the biggest testament to that oh is my. cancer you don't understand cancer. evolution do you i do understand evolution very well like i did biology i understand it very well i'm probably better than anyone you chat. you think and we arrived here strictly based on mutations of the, and random chance um there's this mutation little, there's a, force of new genetic material two there words no, there, no other, there is no other driving force of new material it's mutation so you have you have other I, things i understand like, but that it's not the only thing is my I'm asking you, what's that other thing? Yeah, so mutation selection. Natural selection, right. Yes, yeah, okay, so natural selection and mutation, okay. Is so natural selection, selection random? Selection occurs. Selection occurs once there's genetic material in the place and the selection pressures, okay? But you need that genetic material to be there in the first place. Yeah, and I okay. don't think you can build up, you don't think, I, don't, I, I think it's impossible to build up some things that are so complex that outside the realms of possibility. Why do you think it's impossible? Out. Okay. When people say evolution is true, they assume it, and then they say, "Look at this, and look at this, right?" So there's a rock. Um, why do you think uh, it's impossible? Okay, look, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why it's impossible. Because I don't believe you can build things step by step that are too complex. You think you could be wrong so. about that? Of course, I could be wrong. But so then, it is possible. Right. Okay, it's possible. When I'm using impossible, I'm using it in a colloquial sense. I'm using it in a colloquial Progress. sense. Progress. It is possible. Okay. Okay, no, no, no. No, but no. You know what I mean. When I say impossible, I'm using it in a colloquial sense. I don't mean literally impossible. Okay. It's impossible. It's possible that you can just like pop poof out of existence. But I mean, that's very improbable, right? So that's how I'm using it. Okay. I'm saying okay. incredibly improbable for that to occur. And when people say evolution is true, they look at two things in the fossil record and they look at the gap between them and they say, this happened by this... Um, you need to provide the mechanism. And if the mechanism doesn't work, then the theory Wait, is false. Hang on. Can I stop you there? Yes. Yeah. You, you said you need to provide the mechanism. Yeah. And you have to provide the mechanism and it has to be viable. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. Let's, let's assume I cannot provide the mechanism. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me the mechanism that Allah used to create people? By design. What's the There's mechanism? There's either two, look, there's either two... As a biologist, you know what I mean by mechanism, right? Like the I pathways. Do, I yes, I know. The steps. There's two, there's, look, there's two possibilities. There's either some sort of biological underlying mechanism that's um, um, either random, right? There is there is no, like, there's only two possibilities. Can I, should design. I repeat my question again? I'm telling you, I'm answering. It's either random, right? It's either some sort of, like, random mechanism. You're talking about Allah? It's designed. No, no, no. Oh, it's designed design this is what i mean when i say mechanism i mean you have to prove that random gradual changes can produce that i'm thing going to repeat itself. my question again mustafa i'm asking for the mechanism allah used to create people look I feel, this is stemming I mean, because you don't understand from like the fact that you don't understand biology what i'm saying is that the more when i say mechanism there's only two options in this sense something is either this phone is either designed right or it's either as a result of random processes or in or processes that have no foresight so if you're going to say that this process, this thing, this, this thing that is um, this phone in my hand is as a result of. Um, Let me, I'll take the word mechanism out. How did Allah create humans? We don't have to know. I don't have to know how a watch was created. What? I don't have to wait, wait. I don't have to know how a watch was created for me to say it was designed. I don't have to know how a car That's was created. That's not my question. My question is, designed. how did Allah create humans? That doesn't matter. It, mean, it makes no difference to the point that I'm making how God created. I, now ask I me a question know. about evolution. You mean to ask you a question about evolution? Yeah. Okay. Can you provide me any evidence that gradually- It doesn't evolution... matter. No, no, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. It isn't? No, it's not the same thing. Because I, you don't have to know how something is created, right? For, it to, um, for me to say it's designed, right? But if you're going to say it's not designed, then you have to, because um, like you said, there's an inference to design, right? Is there not an inference design? You do it all the time in real life. You do it all the time. You look at like watches. What do we got here? Hey, Corey looks cool. I go by looks, I profile. <laughs> Oh, you're frozen, Corey. Wake up. Is he sleeping? 
He's sleeping. Oh, no, he isn't. <laughs> hey, Corey, wake up. Hi, Corey. Oh, it says on his shirt, I need a miracle. This could be good if he can never talk to me. Uh oh, what did he just put in his mouth? And now he's contemplating life. He's, he's, he's asking himself, he's asking himself, does this taste good or not? Hey, he's showing his face on my, uh, and he knows what he's getting into. This is, hey, you see me, right? You can hear me? Hello? <laughs> What's happening right now? Say something. I can't hear you, Corey. Can you wave? Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. But I can't hear you. Yeah, I don't know. Try try as going to your settings. Uh the gearbox. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if that worked. Doesn't. Oh, there we go. Yes. Cool. No, it's frozen. There. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. You're quiet, okay. but. Um, we'll move closer. I, I know you, right? The guy. I, yeah, I'm an atheist, but I brought my um Christian friends. So do I get pine points? <laughs> business. Business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you get pine back. points. How are awesome. you doing? How are you doing? Uh, what, what's your name again on the left? Oh, my name is Eric. Eric, right, right. Uh, yeah, a thousand pine points to you. Actually, I'll give you five thousand. So what's oh. so so, Corey? I see on your shirt says, "I need a miracle." Uh, no, no uh, relation to my religion. It's a Grateful Dead shirt. Oh, okay, okay. What is your religion? I'm a Catholic. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All your life. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You like it? Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> can't really complain. Do you get to have certain rules, like you can't have coitus before marriage and that sort of thing? I mean, it was definitely uh, <laughs> taught to me when I was younger, but I'm not saying I haven't followed through with it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I also personally don't believe that that is something that is should be seen as, as strict anymore, given uh. how society's changed. Is there any other mortal sins that you don't think should be strict anymore? That's not a mortal sin, right? That's no, that's not that bad. No, I don't think so. But um, so why are you a Catholic? Besides that, you um, I I mean I see it as a kind of kind of like a just like an outlook out, output for like therapy or something. Not not necessarily therapy, but just something to when my mind gets thinking to get me going. Instead of like, I'm not really a science guy. I just kind of, I prefer to, I guess, more philosophy. But religion, yeah, Christianity kind of, kind of gets me to question some of my, some of the things I experience in life, and I get it's kind of a, a source for a way of information that I can kind of find myself because it asks me to look within myself. What What does um being a Christian mean to you? Um. It just means I have something I, someone I can always turn to, somewhere I can always turn to. Um, that someone is, is, are you talking about Jesus or just other Christians? Just, uh, yeah, the church, priests, um, my family, if I, because my family's also Christian. Um, but then I also have God I can turn to and whenever I'm in times of need and it's kind of just kind of a way to just get anything off my shoulder. I can just kind of talk to whomever, whomever I, I please. Community. I get it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but do you believe that it's actually true? Like, um, like uh, the core claims of Catholicism is that there was a guy uh, 2,000 years ago named Jesus who was God incarnate and died for the sins of the world and uh, rose from the dead. Do you believe that? I mean, yes, I do. But I can also see it as um, sort of a way to uh, sort of just the story of Jesus as a way to tell people, hey, maybe this is how you should be looking at how you live your life. 
okay. maybe follow these rules. He doesn't necessarily have to have been a real person, but you could think that he was and that there's a person that lived like this and there's no reason that you can't live like this as well. I see. But do you personally believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Yeah. <laughs> he rose up, but when I see the the shoulder shrug, it, I don't see a lot of conviction there. Oh, it's too bad. I'll give him a second to try to get back. I tell you, your, uh, your Catholic priests are not going to be happy with you. Do you really believe Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Yeah, sure. Why not? Why not? Sounds like a good story. Yeah, he's back. I think. Maybe not. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I lost you there. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't have a whole lot of conviction there when I asked that question. Oh, now you. Now I can't hear you again. You're on your phone, right? And someone's calling you, and that's what's happening. Yeah, it does that when people call you. So whatever you did last time to fix it, you got to do it again. But if you're a popular guy, it might not work because every time someone uh, texts you or notifies you of something. working now yes there you go okay cool um were you talking about when i was whether or not jesus rose from the dead yeah you didn't sound convinced convincing well i mean obviously there's parts like obviously jonah didn't get swallowed by a whale and live for three days but that's more of a story that you're supposed to take as a metaphor or sort of how i think it's more of how the guy lived his life but i mean with jesus i i can personally Maybe not that happened, died for three days, but he could have been maybe say excommunicated from the community, like where he was, and it was just perceived as he was dead. But that's also the enjoy, that's kind of what I enjoy about Christianity is that it's all up to interpretation and I can kind of choose to believe what I want to believe. Oh, that sounds and, dangerous to me. I mean, it, 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 I think it is, but. At the end of the day, to me, all that really matters is what the big man upstairs thinks. So that's kind of where I sort of... Well, Jesus, if, if Christianity is true, Jesus is the big man upstairs. Because he's God, right? Mm hmm Or do you not believe that? No, I do. I believe they're all three in one. Okay. And the reason you believe that is? So, I mean, it was the way I, what I was taught. I, okay. Just through, through the Bible. So it's just what I would believe. Okay. And... um haven't been told why not <laughs> you haven't been told why not no one's told me why why they wouldn't all be the same yeah, i guess you have no muslim friends yeah <laughs> <laughs> right i mean very few but i guess i haven't gone into religious debates with them because i just was talking to a muslim and if he were here right now what you just said is the worst thing you could ever say god is three in one man they would be so upset with you <laughs> we were listening to that, but it was kind of hard to pay attention to it. It was just, it was going on. Too yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was tough. But I guess, Corey, like, I, t what I'm hearing, hearing from you is that to you, it's more of a community thing, not whether yeah. or not it's actually true. Yeah, because, I mean, it doesn't have to be true, but if it, may, if, if it helps me out through my days, if it is true, then I, I, I don't see why it can't be true. Yeah. But you know, a bowling league works too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, for a good year, we couldn't do that. So, and poker. You play poker from time to time. Because you know, I have one of the best poker nights in all the United States. Did mm. you hear that? No, I didn't. I, I mean, I heard you now, but I did not know that. No, it's true. And uh, and for the low, low cost of twenty bucks entry fee, you could play tournaments or cash games, and 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 you can come and sit with a bunch. There's some Christians there. Most of them are. Here. Or atheists, but we have a great time. We talk about religion and politics and poker. So that's a, a another community you could be a part of if you so desire. Maybe it's are three very enjoyable things. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes. 
Is she Catholic? Yes. What would she think if you left Catholicism? Would she dump you? I don't know because I, well, we've just recently started dating and I, I don't know how far her faith goes necessarily. But how, how long have you been dating? About a month, I believe. You should ask her that now before it's too late. Just say, okay. just like, uh, pretend it's like no big deal. And you're just like, you know, going for a walk, whatever. And say, hey, just curious. If I ever left uh, Catholicism, would you leave me? Like, let's say we got serious in the future. See what she says. That is, that is a very interesting question, yes. Because what you don't want to have happen is, you know, you date for years. Yeah. I know you're just a month in. You're still in the tingly phase, right? And uh, But you don't want to date for years and all of a sudden, let's say, you leave Christianity leave catholicism and then she goes oh get out yeah, of my face that's the one thing. like her parents will probably think you're the devil Want nothing i mean my you. own family would probably think even worse so. oh yeah that too yeah is she good looking yeah yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be tough yeah yeah, yeah i guess you better stay a catholic then i was gonna say i, guess I, stay <laughs> <laughs> I mean i am the last of my siblings so i gotta i gotta i gotta carry through <laughs> Okay, well, it was nice talking to you, Corey and Eric. Okay, so. Yeah, we'll take care. Back. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> hey, I know there's a lot of other callers. I actually have six people waiting right now, but I have to pick my, up my son from school. Um, maybe I can do some really fast one. Oh, I said piggy. Oh, Christian's trying to get in. Are you there, Piggy? Yes, I am here. Yeah, what, what do you want to say? Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about consciousness. Would that be a conversation you would like to have? I can barely hear you. you got to really talk loud and close to your mic. Okay, uh, consciousness. No, I don't want to talk think... about consciousness. No? No. Dang it. Okay, well, that's all I got for today. Okay, sorry. Take care. Okay. Well, that was easy. Uh, let's see here. Max, the Muslim apologist, Mary. Oh, let's let Mary in. I wanted to talk a Hello? Hi, Mary. I remember you, I think. Yeah, I think I was here like a week ago, maybe two now. How are you? I'm doing well. I, I, uh, I only got a few minutes because I got to pick up my son from school. But what did you want to talk about? Yeah, I heard that. Um, well, I guess, so two things. One, um, I, I vote to pass a petition around to revoke Mustafa's biology degree. Lightheartedly, lightheartedly, but but at least audit it because um, I don't think there's really an understanding of biology there. But anyway, um, I wanted to talk to you about my good friend. Um, he's a Mormon. Oh, I thought you were going to say Jesus. <laughs> no, remember, I'm, I'm an atheist law student, so very boring. Um, but anyway, my friend is, let's call him Bob. Uh, he's a Mormon and he basically, he concedes that he has incongruent or, um, um, contradictory beliefs, but he also thinks that faith is like beyond logic. Okay. So he's exempt. Exactly. He's exempt from logic and, and that's just where it rests. Yeah, uh, is it, is it uh, Mormonism the only place in his life? Or I would ask him that. Is this the only place that's exempt, or is there other places? Well, I think faith is the only thing that's exempt from logic, so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I would try to appeal to uh, very practical things where faith can be a bad way to uh, live your life. An uh, example would be, like, do we use... Would we want to use faith to measure how much fuel is in your car or uh, airplane that you're about to board? Or do we mm -hmm. want gauges? He's going right. to say gauges, right? Uh, we yeah. Don't, yeah. Yeah, I asked him about like this, um, you know, jar of of gumballs or whatever. Right? You know, would faith help you figure out how many gumballs are in the jar? And he's like, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> um but no, I don't think so. Yeah, if he's a Mormon, he probably gets a lot of uh, community and the family aspect mm -hmm. of it. 
so maybe talk about possible um, downsides of Mormonism and ask mm -hmm. him what he thinks about it. Um, like the one thing with Mormonism is the control aspect. Yeah. And, um, and the it's first... interesting because I, I, he doesn't believe um, all like the historical claims, you know, um, by the book necessarily. So at this point, I'm not even sure why he's Mormon. Because for example, I'd be like, oh, do you believe, you know, Justice Smith, ABCD? Nah, not really. And then also, um, so he's, uh, he's actually from Ghana. And I was like, do you know uh, what the Mormons say about dark skinned people? And he's like, yeah, obviously they were wrong about that. And that was dumb. And, but that was like, you know, the prophets being human. Um, all right, sure. So what I would question him on, uh, what about Morm Morm Mormonism does he think is actually true? Mm. So, for example, does he believe that Jesus slash God actually appeared to Joseph Smith and gave him um, this new gospel or mm -hmm. not? Yeah. yeah because yeah. unless unless he's if, if he's like Corey, the previous caller, mm -hmm. it, it's it's not even about the truth of it all. It's about, you know, just its tradition and community. Mm -hmm. uh, and if that's what it is for him, um, and he's not really you know, that serious about it and not really causing any problems, then I'd say let him have his club, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. I could tell him to join a, a, pork, a poker league or something. <laughs> yeah, invite <laughs> him to my poker game. Right. He might enjoy that. Um, Are you anyway. invited too, by the way? Oh, thank you. Do you play? Um, uh, sometimes. I, I'd have to look into the legality of this <laughs> in case the bar administration is watching. Oh, oh well, I, I actually did look into it. And as long as it's a, a low-stake home game and no rake, that's important. There's no rake, no house. It's just mm -hmm. like, like, I think even President Joe Biden plays poker. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I could see that. All right, yeah, maybe I'll drop by sometime. Um, <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah. thank you for talking. Yeah, email me and uh, we'll set you up. Sure. Okay, bye, Doug. Yeah. Okay, let's get the music started. Mary can be our token female. Actually, we have a we have more than just a token now. I guess. See, look, my volume's down to seventy-one. Should not be there. And now I'm gonna crank it up to hundred. Always does that. Bothers me. My apologies to any donations, gifts tithes that I've missed. Deepak, thank you. Christianity is better than Islam because 3W of a... Oh. Because <laughs> a set beats ace high. Yeah, I get it. The set is the trinity. Ace high is Allah. I was going to do so many things today and we ran out of time. I blame Mustafa. You took all our time. Music's too loud? How's that? Is that better? Thanks, Toaster Crumbs. Love you like a houseplant. That's what I like to hear. 